Hey guys, it's Carolina here from Carolina's Crafts and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be making an engagement album for myself. So I normally don't make things for myself, but I've been wanting to do an engagement album since I got engaged. Um, so this is what we're going to do. Um, it's going to be similar to my wedding album that I shared with you guys that was cinch bound. I do want my wedding, uh, my engagement album to be cinch bound. So I am going to be using my Heidi Swap, um, cinch. So if I could find this, I will link it down below for you guys, but we are going to be using this probably not in this video. Um, but in some parts of this video, because <laughs> this is going to be in parts guys, I'm going to be making it along with you guys um, and figuring things out with you guys. Here is the collection I'm gonna be using and I like it because it's not a lot of like wedding specific themed papers. Um, there's a lot of collections out there that have like wedding dresses and stuff and I originally thought I was gonna use a different collection but this is an engagement album, not a wedding album. So I am just going to go with this collection called Happily Ever After by Simple Stories. It's got a lot of florals, um, but it's also got some other pretty papers in here as well. So and then got little like ring paper back here. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so that is the paper I'm going to be using. And then I did also prepare some other elements like here. Um, so I foiled this and I cut out or I printed on vellum and then I foiled it with some gold and it's just our love story with our firsts and the dates on here. So I'm gonna include that into my album. I also prepared some rings. I just cut it out with my Silhouette Cameo and these measure about four and three eighths by six and three eighths. So I have two of them so that I can have them go back to back on top of one another in my album. And then I also cut out some lips with my Silhouette Cameo and I'm thinking of turning this into a pocket. So I got two pieces and they're gonna just be stitched together. And I'm thinking of turning this into a pocket so I could put in our, um, kind of our first kiss story, which is a funny one and I just want it in here. Um, so I thought that would be cute. And then I'm gonna need something for the proposal story, but we will figure that out. All right guys, so now that I have kind of everything that I'm gonna be using, but I'm sure I'll be pulling in a lot more things, let's get started with my chipboard cover. Okay, so we're gonna need to cut down our chipboard. I am using my swing line paper cutter just to cut down the chipboard. Everything else I'll probably be using my Fiskars paper cutter, but this is just really good for cutting um, chipboard. So I'm going to need, um, on my other album, I did five and a half by seven and a half, two pieces. This time I'm going to do five and a half by seven and three quarters. And it's because I want to, I don't want my, like last time my pages were almost at the edge of my spine or at the edge of my chipboard. This time I don't want it to be at the very edge. So I'm going to just cut it a little bigger. So I'm gonna do seven and three quarters. So I'm lining up seven and three quarters first. All right, and then I got cut two pieces. Oh wait, we could still do, oh wait, we could still do seven and a half, but we need five and three quarters. Oops, all right, see, okay. Hold on, so cut this to seven and a half. And I'm gonna do five and three quarters. So I'm gonna need another piece. Um, my spine, I'm gonna do one and a quarter. Well, this is not good to cut on here, that small piece. So let's cut another piece that's gonna measure five and three quarters by seven and a half okay so I have two pieces that measure five and three quarters by seven and a half and then I'm gonna take in my paper trimmer because I need another piece for my spine that's gonna measure seven and a half by one and a quarter but I'm not gonna use my regular blade so I'm gonna take that off 
Um, I'm gonna use a dulled out blade, and this is just one that's no longer good on paper, but it still works great on chipboard. So this still measures seven and a half, but we are gonna cut it at one and a quarter. And I'm just gonna go up and down a few times. And it did not cut through, so I'm just gonna flip it and then cut one more time and it should cut through. Okay, so then we have my spine here. Now I'm gonna pick out some paper that I want for the front and back cover. And I think for my spine, we're gonna try to do like a fall leather um, kind of spine. I think that will go good with this. So let's see. Here's my paper. I have a little bit more than the collection kit itself. I think I have like some extra papers that I picked up. Maybe like some extra cut aparts. I'm thinking maybe this one for a cover. Only because it's got this on the back side and this is gonna be hard to use in my album. I'm I want like just a double-sided pages. Um that one we could use. And hold on, let's see which cut apart. I want to use. I want one that says like she said yes or something and I wonder if there's a cut apart like that in here. There's the proposal. Um, none of those. I might have one somewhere. <laughs> Hold on guys. I have to see. I want one that says like she said yes. Okay guys, so I have to pull in a cut apart sheet from this collection called Wedding Bliss. And there's a cut apart in here that says she said yes. And that's what I want <laughs> on my front cover. Um, is it this one? No. I think it's on this sheet. Aha, okay, so we have the she said yes, and I want that on my front cover. So I'm just gonna cut off that cut apart, and I'm glad it's a more neutral color instead of the pink, because this collection is more um, neutral. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut off that branding strip. And then we're going to cut this off. Okay, so we got that cut apart, which is going to go perfect with that paper. Okay, I knew I had a cut apart that said that. So, all right, I'm thinking if I do this as the front cover, that kind of blends in, and especially if I'm going to have this white so maybe i want something dark this could be a good um background layer so i'm gonna put that on the side but i think i want something darker for my cover piece I might have to use this ring paper because it's just, it's fitting guys. I, I am liking it. <laughs> so I think we're going to use this as my front cover. I just need to use that ring paper. And I think I have another sheet like this. I think that's one I got multiples of just because I liked the cut aparts. And I do have um, some more on the way to use in other things. So yeah, I do have another one so I could still use the cut aparts. I have another two of those. So all right, we could spare one. So I'm gonna cut this paper. Um, let me cut off the branding strip. And you're gonna do that for the front and back cover. Six and three quarters by eight and a half, guys. Because it needs to be a little bit bigger than our pages, which maybe I'll just make it seven. But six and three quarters is gonna work too. So I have seven and I'll do by nine. How about that? To make it a little easier with a little bit more wiggle room for ourselves. 
So seven by nine. Okay, so I have one page and I need my back cover as well. So seven by nine. Okay, I'm still holding on to those other sheets because we're still gonna use them. So now you're gonna have these covers and these are gonna be wrapped around your two chipboard pieces and you're just gonna wrap them around. Um, so I got to put double-sided tape on each piece of this chipboard. Okay, so I'm going to use this double-sided tape. This is just from scrapbook.com. And for these kinds of covers and any kind of album cover, I always make sure it's like completely covered up because I don't want any air bubbles or anything like that. So we're going to completely cover all of this up and I'm just using a bone folder to kind of cut off my edges and you see how here in the middle um, I don't have like a big enough space so I'm just gonna peel one of those tapes and go back in with another one down the center so I don't have to play around with all those thinner strips of paper okay so there's one and I'm just going to peel off the tape now and I'm just going to put it onto my um, cover page. Okay, so I don't even know which way this goes. Does it really matter? Um, so I'm going to put this down, just try to eyeball it into the center. Obviously you want your pattern on the outside, so make sure you're flipping your paper. And then I have this piece that I need to cover with tape. Okay, so again, I have my ring paper on the outside. I'm gonna place this in the center. Okie dokie. So I have those two pieces. Now I gotta miter the corners. So to miter my corners, I'm bringing in my cutting mat. I have one of my papers. I have this miter corner tool and you see how there's like a space between the corner and the outside of where you're gonna cut. That's just so you don't cut too much and then it won't fold properly. So what did I do here? Did I lock this somehow? There we go. Okay, and I'm using my rotary cutter and just cutting off those edges. And you're going to do that for both of your pieces. Okay, so one of them is done. And now let's bring my other one in.
Okay, let's bring in some thinner double-sided tape and a smaller bone folder. And now you're gonna put tape on the edges of your paper. And we're gonna be folding this over the chipboard. So you just wanna make sure this is a very strong adhesive and I'm using score tape for this and I'll have it linked down below as well. So I could have the scrapbook.com one linked down below and I'll have this one, which is from Amazon, also linked down below for you guys. Okay, so that's one, and now I'm gonna add tape to the other. Okay guys, so I'm gonna burnish all of my tape. I don't want it to go anywhere. I want it really stuck down to my page. And now I'm gonna start taking off my tape one side at a time. I'm gonna fold in, fold in over any excess overhang. And I'm gonna start folding this in over my chipboard and just working it in slowly. I don't want any cracking and then just go all the way down and press down. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, I have some overhang. So I'm gonna fold that in and fold in the tape. And then just work it in. Okay, and then I'm gonna press down with my bone folder. And then you're gonna kind of like push in your corners if you guys know what I mean. So here at the edges, you just kind of push them in with your bone folder. That way when you do the other pieces, the top and the bottom, those kind of get pushed in and they won't be like super sharp edges. So now I'm taking off this other piece, folding in the tape. And we're gonna start working that in. And Simple Stories and Echo Park Paper does a really good job with um, folding over chipboard, usually without cracking. It does a really good job with that. I can't say the same for like every single kind of paper, but so far I've tried Echo Park and Simple Stories and it's usually really good and doesn't really have any cracking. Okay, so we have our front cover and that's all done. And you guys could see there's no cracking, no nothing on that whole spine, nowhere. It's perfect. Okay, so that's one piece done. And now we're gonna do this next piece, same idea. So burnish all of your tape. Fold in your corners. Then you gotta push in your corners.
Okay guys, so we have our two front covers. Now I need to do the um, spine. So we have a front and back cover. Now let's do the spine guys. So my spine, I don't really know how to do this with leather. So we're about to figure this out together. And that totally just rhymed. Um, I hope this is long enough. Uh, just barely long enough. So I don't wanna risk it. I'm gonna probably cut something like this. And actually I do have to cut this way anyway, cause I need a bigger amount of space cause I want some of this to go over the front and back covers. So I need this piece to be about like three and a quarter inches maybe. Maybe we should just, yeah, like three and a quarter. Um, okay, let's measure. Okay, so hold on, let's see. Three and a quarter. Or, I mean, three and three quarters, I think. So that's three and three quarters. Okay, I think that's pretty straight. I wonder if my paper trimmer would cut through this. Um, let's try that out. If worst comes to worst, I'll just need to cut another piece if this doesn't work, but maybe it will. So I'm gonna first cut this long way. Cutting through something. can't say that cut completely through, but I think we could use scissors. Okay, so I got that part, and now I need to cut down this other way. And I just, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna have enough space. I almost feel like Maybe I should make it even a little wider. I just want it to look like a book. So you know what, maybe we're gonna... Um, you know what, we're actually gonna cut this down. Let's do about five inches. Five inches cuts here. You know what, maybe we're gonna do five inches. Okay, so I made it so originally my mark was supposed to go from here to here. I ended up using this other side because it was longer and I still extended it more. So it ended up being five inches now. And I'm gonna go in and cut off the rest and I'm gonna try to do it as straight as possible because we're actually gonna be seeing that straight edge And that's not straight at the end there. Okay. I think that's pretty good. All right, so we could save the rest of this. Wow, you don't get a lot on this roll. I thought you would get a lot more, but it's fine because it's still plenty to work with in some crafty projects. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this chipboard and I'm gonna cover it up with tape. 
So I'm using my score tape. I just want to cover the whole entire thing. And then for the center, I do have a quarter inch tape. Okay, so this isn't gonna matter so much about how much space you have top and bottom, but it's gonna be really important to kind of get this in the center and also make sure this lies straight. So I'm gonna bring this back in, gonna line up my straight edges. So that's five inches. And I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> I just, I wanna make sure like it's in the center, but I'm not about to start doing all that measuring either. Okay, so it's lined up. Does that look like the center? Let's see, I have one, two, one, two. That looks pretty good. And is that crooked? I don't know, looks pretty good to me. So now, what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna add this quarter size tape in between on the outside edges of my chipboard. And this is just my guide before I place down my other paper. So I'm not gonna put anything over that tape because now I, I need to connect the covers, right? So I'm not gonna put anything over this tape. It's just there as a guide for my next pieces. Okay, just make sure that's stuck down. And then I'm gonna pull in my score tape and we're just using a little bit. And this is just so I can make sure my pieces adhere. But I'm also not putting it down on the very edge, which actually I need to clean up that edge a little bit because I'm gonna end up stitching on the edge. Clean up these edges a little. Okay, so my front cover is going to go like right here. And how much space am I going to have? after this folds. So it's gonna look like that, like a little booklet. I like it. Um, but I think I'll use that straighter edge on the front. Okay, so I'm gonna place this down. Oh, this tape don't really wanna stick into this. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna place this down. We're gonna line it up with that other Kind of that other tape piece that I have, but I'm not going to go over it. That's just where I want to have my space. That looks pretty good, I think. So that's what that is going to look like. And then we need my other side. I could peel off this tape. Okay. And make sure this is the right way. Is it this way or this way? I think it's this way. So line it up with the quarter inch tape, but you're not going over it. You're making sure to just have that around the outside. Okay, so now we have my spine. Looking good, right guys? Okay, and now we just kind of have to fold in these edges, these top edges, and this one I'm gonna cut down a little bit. Okay, 
Okay, so that when I fold it over, I want it to kind of line up with my other paper. Okay, so I'm gonna glue that down, I think. So we're gonna use some Fabri-Tac, but before you even glue that down, make sure to take off that other tape that's in between the layers. Okay, and we're gonna glue this. And I'm using, like I said, Fabri-Tac, so I'm gonna apply a generous amount of glue. I want to make sure it's all gonna stick down. So just fold that over. and do the same thing on the top. That did not stay. We might have to do some stitching, guys. And I might stitch around the whole entire thing. Um, it's a good thing we only have tape on the edges here. We didn't go up to the very top. Um, so maybe we'll be able to get some stitching done without breaking our thread. So that's what that looks like. Isn't it cute? It looks like a little booklet and then this is gonna go right here and then obviously some decorator, but I think we're gonna do some stitching. Oh, that looks so good. And we did it pretty even too, look at that. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go do some stitching and I'll be right back guys. Okay guys, before I do any stitching, I'm actually just gonna cut another piece for my spine. This is not from the collection, it's just from another paper pad. And I'm gonna cut this at seven and a quarter, so just a quarter inch smaller than the height of my book. So seven and a quarter. And I'm gonna do this by five inches so that it matches the same length of that outside spine that I have. So five inches. And then I'm gonna take my other two pieces and we're gonna just use these on the inside of the album as well. So I'm gonna cut these at seven and a quarter. So those are just the scrappies from the other um, kind of pages we cut for the covers. Okay, so we got those pieces and we're going to glue these down. So this one's going to get glued down right into the center right here. Okay, um, I don't even know what to use. Um, I guess we're going to use some 
uh, fabric tack. So I don't even know how to glue this down. And um, the fabric, I don't know, like it just has to go over the fabric. Uh, I just want to make sure I get this on all the pieces because we're going to be folding this up. So I want to make sure it's covered really well. Okay, so line this up and glue this down. Okay, so that is the spine on the inside. And I think I'm gonna do these other two pieces last. So should I alternate pages? Should I go like this? Maybe. I was gonna do the same on each side originally. Yeah, maybe we'll just go with that. Um, but I'm gonna do some stitching first because the stitching is gonna come through here and I don't want it on this part right here. So I'm gonna go stitch down here first to make sure this stays in place. Okay guys, I'm back and I did the stitching just on the spine here. What I realized and the reason I'm not going around the whole entire thing is because I forgot that we put tape down on the chipboard. And as I'm going through the chipboard, my needle keeps breaking because it keeps getting, it keeps going through the, um, the double-sided tape. So I only did it here. I had to stop a million times. You could see the thread here. Um, but I'm going to place this down now and that's going to cover up kind of like that section right there. So that'll be okay. And for this, I'm thinking... Um, I think I have to use the fabric tape. I was going to use double-sided tape, but, um, I don't know. Maybe we'll use the fabric tape. And before I even do that, you have to add your, uh, ribbon. If you're going to be adding a ribbon closure, which I am going to do. So I'm using this tan color. It's a seam binding from my scrap cabin shop. And I'm going to use that. So you want to add your tape first before you add over your patterned paper. So I'm eyeballing where the center is here. And let's go with something like that. Okay, I think that looks like the center. So I'm gonna stick that down. And I'm gonna peel that tape off. And I'm gonna add my seam binding. So when you add this down, you want it to be flat. Okay, and then I'm gonna add more tape just to make sure that stays in place. So some tape on the end here, and then some tape on the other end, but I don't wanna go to the very end. I want it to be where my patterned paper is gonna go. Um, so something like right there. And then I'm gonna add another piece of tape for good measure right in the center. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off now, and now I could add the inside cover. You know, maybe we can use double-sided tape on this. I think I actually will. So I'll take 
this double sided tape and we're just going to cover up the whole back side. And just to make sure that's gonna stick down super well, I have my double-sided tape and I'm gonna go over with some wet glue also, just mainly on the edges. But you don't want too much because you don't want it to bleed out either. And by bleed out, I mean you don't want <laughs> glue seeping out from the edges okay so i'm gonna put this like right here and i'm gonna make sure to line it up with all of my edges So then I'm going to cut off some of my seam binding. I always like to cut off a little bit more probably than I'm, what I'm going to need. And I do this because if it's still too long later, I could cut some more off and then use it on a tag. So it's not going to go to waste. But I also just want to make sure that I'm going to have enough. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to grab a piece of tape. I'm going to try to like see where this would go. So like right there, and that did not work out. Maybe like right here. Yep, that looks pretty good. <laughs> There's the train in the background, as always. <laughs> it's become a staple in my videos now. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this down and then reinforce that with some more tape. Actually, I'm going to take these off. I'm going to put tape on the back of my patterned paper. This is my inside. So I'm going to put that thicker tape on here. Thank you. 
Okay, we'll peel off all these pieces. And I'll bring this back in. I think this is going to go this way. And I'm going to put some glue on the edges. And I'm going to glue that down, making sure to line up the paper. Okay. So now I'm just going to cut off some more seam binding, kind of lining it up with the other one, cutting off approximately the same amount. And that is our base of our um, album so far, guys. <laughs> All that like work in this super long video and we barely got anything done. But I guess this is going to be part one, guys. This is part one of my video on how to do the base of my engagement album. Okay guys, so that is gonna be everything for this part of the video. I'm not even gonna glue this down yet because I wanna see what scraps I have on the end. I might do some layering um, before I put this down. So this, we have an idea of what it's gonna look like. And then here's the back. So at least we know. And yeah, so that is part one. Stay tuned for part two of my video. It will be linked down below, but you won't be able to watch it until it's actually posted. And it'll tell you a date of when it's gonna be posted down there in the description box below too. And if it's already posted, I, it won't have a date. But yeah, that is everything guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in part two of my engagement album video. Stay tuned and I'll see you then. Bye.